Everyone is bearish. We are not in that camp. Those words in a new note today from our next guest, J.P. Morgan Chief Global Market Strategist Marco Kalanovic. Welcome. It's good to have you on. You are a tough man to catch up with, so we're certainly <laughs> glad you. to have you on. So Thank you. Ex expand on that. Everyone's bearish. We're not in that camp. Why? So basically, uh, we don't think a uh, global recession will happen, you know. So we think U.S. Uh, consumers should be okay. We expect China to pick up the slack. Europe, we do call for recession. But globally, we don't think sort of we end up with a, with a, with a, with a global recession. And if that's the premise, now you need to look at the sort of where's the positioning. And we estimate that equity investors are basically at 10th percentile. So kind of on a scale from 0 to 100, they're at 10, you know. So quite a bit of bearish is already priced in. So we're basically saying, like, look, situation in the world is, is difficult, you know, and, 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 and we're definitely not saying that things are rosy, but what's already in the price is, is, is perhaps actually slightly worse than that, you know. So we think um, if inflation comes down a little bit and Fed doesn't do something completely sort of <laughs> disruptive for the market, you will have some inflows, you know, some from the buybacks, some from some systematic investors, and market can sort of creep, creep higher. So, so that's, that's a view. A key part of, of your view centers on inflation, uh, not mm -hmm. a surprise. I'm going to quote from your note. We are again out of consensus and maintain that inflation will resolve on its own as distortions fade and that the Fed has overreacted with 75 basis mm -hmm. points hike. This overreaction and subsequent but large unrelated decline in inflation will likely result in a pivot, which is positive for cyclical assets. There are a lot of people who are on the other side of that. So how do you yeah. justify that belief? Yeah, so so um, when we say like pivot, we, we don't necessarily think they will now suddenly stop hiking or cut. You know, they, they'll keep on they'll keep on hiking, and 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 the policy will 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 be basically restrictive, and it is it is already restrictive. That said, on the margin, sort of relative where the market is, uh, we think that um, that that um, uh, the shift could be a little bit more sort of market friendly. Uh, in a in a sense, uh, we do still have a September 13 uh, CPI number. And we know sort of gas prices fell a lot uh, in August, um, you know, some of the food prices, airline tickets, used cars. So there are sort of improvements. And, and we think that the number, the CPI number, September 13, is going to be benign, similar to the number we saw, we saw recently in August. You know, and then if you have a two... CPI prints, which are uh, showing, you know, two, two data points show a little bit of a trend. I, and I think Fed should acknowledge it in some way. We, we, again, we're not expecting anything uh, super dovish, but just uh, not to disrupt the market, not to cause the sort of financial uh, financial crisis with some very, very hawkish, hawkish moves. So, so again, we think on the margin, uh, things mm -hmm. could look a little bit better. But it's, it's not a key part of our thesis that we expect some sort of major pivot. Understood, but square something for me. If you do mm -hmm. expect inflation to, quote, unquote, resolve on its own, as mm -hmm. you suggest, and mm -hmm. the Fed to likely pivot, as, as you write, uh, why would mm -hmm. I want to stay away from large cap tech, as you suggest? That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Why? You know, so 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 um, you know, we like value. We 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 like cyclicals. We like value. We like some uh, sectors uh, which I think are um, uh, have a lot of sort of tailwinds uh, going on for them. One one of them is energy. It's actually our key key um, uh, 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 call, highest conviction. Um, it is also a little bit of a hedge, you know, because inflation does come back up. It's going to probably be because of oil and gas, and and uh, and and if we are sort of let's say miss a little bit on that, at least our sector allocation. Is going to be very pro-cyclical. It's going to benefit from uh, from, um, uh, from 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 inflation, you know, and also valuation argument. You know, when you look at the, some of the large cap tech, not all of it, but some of it is trading at a multiple, which is not too far from all-time highs, you know, price-wise and multiple-wise. So you're also taking a little bit more risk than by going into stuff which is very expensive. On the other side, if you go, let's say, to energy, which is like a single-digit multiple, you have a, quite a bit of a buffer of safety, right? A recession multiple is 12. You know, you have some of the energy stocks trading at a single-digit multiple, most of them for that matter, right? So you, you have a little bit of a buffer. You have a little bit of a hedge. We do think that sort of oil prices will creep up higher after this, this drop. So we are positive on commodities. And that's sort of the allocation then when we prefer.